Well, good day. We're going to make some distilled water today. This is one of the three distillers that I actually have. So, and you'll see the difference between clean and not clean. Oh, sugar. I don't do that. <laughs> All right, that's clean. I just gave it a rinse out. You will see the difference once we're finished, and you'll know why I'm distilling my water. So, just going to pop some. Uh, Ordinary tap water in there. And fill it up to that line. Okay, you can use any sort of water you want, uh, even dirty, muddy creek water. But then uh, one would wonder if you've uh, if you've got power to run this distiller, then why you'd be using muddy creek water. But the point is you can use rainwater, whatever you want. This is just ordinary tap water. So it's just ordinary tap water, Brisbane water. I'm going to use a trusty TDS meter. And in this case we're at about 220 parts per million of uh, contaminants. Or whatever you want to call it. Which brings me to why we're doing this video. So all we do then is simply put the lid on. And slip down there and then you just plug that in make sure it's in firmly and switch them on like that so then you just get your bottle this is a uh, 4 litre bottle and your filter which I've already put in I don't know if you can see that. Put them on there. I run three of them, but this one fits on the sink. And I put that up in there. Make sure it's not going to push this lid up, as I found was a problem. It should be okay. And you come back in uh, anywhere from three to five hours. Interestingly, I've just filled this third one up with rainwater from the tank. And you see, hopefully, quiet birds. And you see, it's actually only about 18 parts per million. Proving that, uh, yep, yeah, it's basically distilled water in. Um, in the rainwater tank, there's the other setup ready to go. Except for the fact that uh, you've got runoff from the roof, polluting it like bird poo and whatever else, airborne contaminants. Interesting. Well, we've done that now. We've um, allowed it to cool down a bit. Well, that's the one on the filter, there's the water. I'll actually do a pH, probably not pH. Do that if you like. We'll use the meter now. This water that you saw from the tap, which is I think what 22 parts per million, whatever. As you can see, that that's three. That's three. Uh, sometimes two, but three, which is well and truly pure. Uh, apparently, anything under 10 is the uh, pure water so that's what it converted to it no longer has the toxins or anything in it because it's gone through the process of steam now let's have a look in this one mm. nice mm. Look. Yeah. Yeah. another good example of the muck left behind from the tap water and again, it smells like radio to cool it. Every time I do, it's a smell like it. So it's not good. You want to drink that, you go right ahead. That won't be. Okay, well, we've done our uh, water. Now, I want to show you hopefully what it's like in here. It's not too bad this time. Oh. 
it's a stinks of ethylene glycol radiator coolant. I don't know how well you can make that out. That's that's a clean result. As you can see this, I don't even like to touch it. Well that muck. That's from the tap water. So without even worrying about um, fluoride in the water, which is why I bought this in the first place. Look at all the other muck we're drinking. And if you could smell it, if it was smell of vision it smells like radiator coolant. It's horrible. Just as a matter of fact, this white one, I uh, actually used tank water. Got out the tank for an experiment. I expected it to be cleaner, but So it just goes to show uh, some of the stuff that gets evaporated up. This is why we're running through filters. Um, this one has a filter in the top part, the others have a filter in that. And it's too hippy here, as I showed you. Water goes in there, the evaporated water drips into there. Comes out the hole here, it goes through. One of these little filters. So we'll make this the very, very final. It's pointless, isn't it? The very final parts of the um, any bugs and everything out. That's how we do it. Here's something I do. I fill the kettle with the uh, distilled water that I made. Um, here's a little anyway. My point is, aside from that, a lot of people say, um, but uh, pure water actually draws out your, um, a lot of nutrients. Uh, it's true if you don't eat anything else or drink anything else. So normally it's not a worry at all. However, uh, the simple fix to that, don't bother buying drops and other expensive stuff like that. Just get yourself some uh, Himalayan pink salt. It's quite common. Not a whole lot more expensive than normal salt, which is cheap anyway. And uh, this is just what I do. Not even a full crank, but I'll just, like, that much, maybe, you know, half a... Half a bit, that's plenty. Okay, so that takes care of that problem. And, um, yeah, that's it, you can enjoy a coffee. Uh, the taste of um, distilled or pure water is a bit different. Um, some people might take a little while to get used to it. But, um, what the hell. Um, I won't be making a uh, much more comprehensive video about water quality that I've been meaning to do for quite some time. However, this one's just about making distilled water, the method I use, and um, you can make your own opinion on the taste. Uh, it's essentially the same as rainwater, but without, um, whereas I guess rainwater is distilled, more or less, um, the end result, if you have a rainwater tank like I do, is that you still have to worry about uh, contaminants uh, being washed off the roof into the tank and also airborne contaminants too, especially around the city, I guess. So um, that's what I do, this is how I do it. And uh, yeah, try it. The thing I uh, don't ever get is when people say, uh, well, I wonder if it falls on deaf ears, you know, because they go, oh yeah, but you know, you do this wrong and that wrong and everything else wrong. So why are you bothering doing that? Well, my theory is every little thing that you do that's not wrong surely makes everything else a little less wrong. Catch you later. Speaking of water, by the way, Another nice rainy day here in Brisbane. 
I love it. I love the rainy weather. And the rainy weather loves me. And the birds love everything. They love the distilling process. Boba particularly loves talking while I'm filming. Bird does. Bird says I particularly love filming. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, missed that. <laughs> Even me, I love filming. And then we have a bit more into the world today. So good to have my computer back. Or a new one in the store. 